No, all right. Well, I thought we came out of the gates the way that we wanted to. It's probably almost the complete opposite of our last game, the Mississippi State game. We were running in mud for the first couple minutes, five, six minutes, and then we got it together and played. This one was the opposite. We played well early and then, uh, then just couldn't get anything going. First half, we did enough to be in a spot that was certainly acceptable. And then in the second half, we let some of our some of our lacks of success impact other aspects of the game, and and they thrived on that, and you know got it more in transition. They were getting more stuff in transition in the second half. They were feeling good, made some plays, and then when good players feel good, they make shots also. So, John, and you, you said earlier this year that you felt like your team would be in every game unless y'all just had an abysmal shooting night. Was that yeah. what this was, and what do you think led to that? Yeah, I mean, it, it was for sure. I, I thought, honestly, even in the first half, we were, I think we were three for whatever from three, and 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 still was a one-point game. I think in a normal, with a normal level of productivity, you're in a much better spot in the second half, and maybe that changes some things from a confidence standpoint, but, um, but yeah, so Obviously, we were in the game at that point. Um, and then I don't know why it was so contagious, whether it was what's riding on the game. I tell these guys, that's the beauty of this conference is that every game counts. Every one is a big game. And so um, for whatever reason, it just we, we, we did not perform well offensively. And then, like I said, that bled over into some other. And it was contagious throughout the whole team. And I read the numbers as we went down. Was, I mean, two guys had acceptable field goal percentages, not counting Josh's one for one. Two guys had acceptable field goal percentages, and nobody else in the game did. So I, I don't know what to attribute it to. They're a good team. Um, so we just got to get to the next thing. Coach, on that same track, was there anything that Alabama did defensively uh, in the second half that really caused you all tr trouble? Um, they were switching some stuff. We had a hard time getting the ball into the post. I thought we looked fatigued a little bit, honestly. Um, and look at the minutes, and, and, and I don't think we should have been based on how that breakdown went. But um, they switched some stuff, which, which made it more difficult for us to get the ball into the post. We like to get the ball into the post. I think we settled for some jump shots. We got some mismatches um, in, 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 in ways that we would normally attack, and we settled even at the last end of the first half. The very last, our very last possession, they switch, and they got a 6'11 guy on Michi, and rather than attack, we shoot a bomb. And so, I don't know, that's just kind of what we defaulted to today for whatever reason. But a lot of it was switching, and um, that's the benefit of switching. But there's some downsides to switching. You wouldn't know that by how we played today. But there are some downsides to switching, and, and we've been able to take advantage of those in a lot of different games, including, like I said, in our last game. So. Yeah, what did Mark Sears do for them in the first half to keep them in that with you guys? Um, he made plays. He's a good player. Uh, you know, he was aggressive. I don't even I don't even see what his numbers were on the whole game, but it seemed like he was doing it all. But uh, had some nice finishes and won. Made some strong moves, but uh, but they made some shots in the first half. Honestly, we did a good job defensively in the first half. Um, a couple breakdowns, but. They made a couple shots that are normally the kind of shots that you know we try to encourage teams to make, and they made them, and that's why the game actually was where it was. And then in, you know, in the second half, it just it just was. But Mark Mark's a good player. He's a, he's you don't trip and stumble and fall your way into the numbers he's put up this year. He's a good player. They look for him. He creates in a lot of different ways for himself and for his teammates. He's unselfish. He can get shots and make buckets without pressing too much. So good player. How much of a boost did Mo Diabate give them off the bench, uh, number 10, coming in, second half? Um, I don't know how to answer that or quantify that. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm in my huddle. So I don't know what kind of boost, how much of a boost he gave them. It was, I mean, I don't know. Sorry, I, I can't answer that effectively. Uh, you, you just touched on the first half defense. That was the lowest point total Alabama's had in the first half this year. What 
what, what, what led to that and, and you know, what, what changed for them? Did you notice anything that changed for them offensively? Yeah, we got back in transition. That was a big part of it. We did a good job in the ball screens, and, and they're a good team. They got it out of the ball screen and made some extra quick passes, and that was kind of in the equation that we had. That was, that was one of the factors that we were gonna, they were going to do that, and they did that a couple times and made some shots, but more times than not, you know, they come down, they get into early ball screen action, very quickly, and so we were committed to to not letting that first action be the action that really generated what they were going to do on the offensive end. So we did a good job of that. Um, and, and in the second half, it, it I, I tell you, it was more like the dog the the tail was wagging the dog, and because we had some offensive struggles, it felt like it bled over into what we were doing defensively, particularly in transition and fighting through some screens. I thought we did a really good job of fighting through some screens and chasing in the first half. We were locked in on things. Uh, we fell asleep a couple times in the second half. I, I, I really do think for the first time it was a real indication of our struggles on offense collectively bled into what we were doing defensively. Coach, y'all were the more physical team in the first half. Then everything shifted uh, in the second half. What was the, what was like the biggest change uh, for your team that stopped being as physical as it was in the first half? I, I'm telling you, the mind is a powerful thing. It's a powerful thing, and if it's in the right places, you tend to do the things that you are focused on and concentrating on. And if it's in the wrong places, you don't. And just you just you do different things. You change what you're doing. Uh, you're thinking about something. Um, the performance that you're having, oh, the lead got down to, that's up to seven now. Whatever you're thinking about, you're out there. You've got to be focused on the mission at hand, and that's one possession. Um, and I thought we were there, but I just think, I think we had some poor play, and that bled into, changed a lot of things. It changed minds. It changed where some guys' heads were at. And then I think what we were doing physically was just a byproduct of where we were at mentally. Coach, with this uh, new year, with this team with Nate Oates, he lost some players to the draft. You, this is your first look at them. What's your impression? Obviously, Brandon Miller's gone, Clowney's gone, but what have you seen if this is your first look at this team? Uh, I mean, they have a good team. I'm not, I can't really compare to this year to last year. You know, like no one else can do that for my team, really. So. They lost a really good player in Brandon Miller. You know, we played them better last year. We have a better team. We played them better last year than this year. So I don't know. I don't know. Sorry, I can't. I can't give you probably what you're looking for on that answer. They have a good team. Um, I don't know. If Nate would be able to tell you how what he thinks how it compares to to last year. But they got a lot of weapons. I'll do one more just because I don't like how I how that one came across and I answered that one. Anybody else got any more? No. Uh, yeah, me, me, you know, so here's Michi Johnson is not an instigator. I, I will say that when it comes to that, like this guy, uh, but they, he had struggled, right? And that's what happens when you are a good player and you get into a hostile environment. They did, everyone did exactly what they should do. do. The fans do, the players were letting him know about it. He made a shot, I think, right before that. And I'm sure they were letting him know about what the score was and all the kinds of things that young people do. And so Michi responded to it. But, um, you know, I think his was a retaliatory technical foul, to be honest with you. And um, so they called it on the bench because that's what, who really instigated the interaction at all was, was, uh, was the bench. But, so, but Michi responded and, and probably earned his tea on that too. So. Thanks, Coach. Thanks.